Hello, Sally. I was just messaging to see how you're doing. How are you feeling right now? I really wish that time would go faster so that you can give birth to my grandchild. I'm really excited to meet the little bundle of joy. Oh, hello, Martha. I hope that you're doing well, too. Thank you for always checking up on me. It's very sweet of you. I'm also very excited to have this baby, but it's still quite far off until I do. It's definitely going to be a while, and time's going quite slowly for me. At the moment, I'm just trying to stay in shape and stay as healthy as possible. That's what I want for myself and the baby. Yeah, of course, that's a good idea. It's best to stay in shape. Your number one priority now is taking good care of your body. Has Isaac been helping you out around the house? I hope that he's supporting you now that you're having a baby. You know if you ever need anything done, I'll be happy to help you out. It'd be no trouble for me to do that for you. My house isn't really that far away from yours, so it's no problem. I'm very grateful for your love and support throughout all of this. I'm really glad that you care so much. If I need anything, I'll be sure to call on you and let you know. I'll ask you for help when I need it. Yeah, no problem, dear. You can always count on me to help you out. I really don't mind doing it at all. It'll give me something to do during the day to pass the time. For now, I don't think I really need anything done, but I hear that giving birth can be super tough on the mom. I think I'll need your help in how to stay calm and get my breathing techniques down. So if you can support me with that, that'll be fantastic. I just wanted to say thank you in advance. You've really been supportive in this, and I'm glad to have a mother-in-law who takes care of me. Of course, Sally, it's my pleasure. I definitely understand what giving birth is like, and for a lot of women, it's very difficult. I'm really looking forward to helping you out through this process and giving you the best advice I can give. For now, just relax and put your feet up. That's a good idea. I'll do that. I need to rest my body and spend some time with my growing baby. Thank you for always looking out for me and supporting me in this. I can't wait to bring my baby into this world. Hey, sweetie. I'm really sorry to have to tell you this, but I've got to go on another business trip tomorrow. Will you be alright just spending some time in the house by yourself? Oh, Isaac, really? You have to go again? Can't they send someone else on these business trips? Your boss surely knows that you've got a pregnant wife, right? You've been having to go on so many business trips recently, it's almost every weekend, isn't it? Well... I don't really know what else to do when they're making me travel so much. It's not like you could tell my boss what I can do. <laughs> I've always got something to do at work, so I guess I can't help that I've been sent on these trips, right? I don't really want to go on these trips, but I don't think my boss has given me much choice in the matter, especially when my company is relying on me to do this. My career is at stake with all these trips and proposals I need to present. So can you please support me, Sally? I'd very much appreciate it. Well, I guess if you say that your career is at stake, I guess I can't really stop you, but the doctors are saying I'm due to give birth any day now. It feels like your company isn't taking that into consideration at all. It's like they don't care about you or your future family. I told them that as well, but they just ignored me and didn't listen to anything I was saying about you and the baby. There was no response at all. They just wanted me to go on this trip and that's it. I'm starting to think maybe it's a shady company. I mean, they do give off that sort of impression, right? Especially more recently since I'm getting so close to my due date. Even though you took out maternity leave at your work, they haven't let you come home and it upsets me. I really wish I could be more prepared for when after the baby's born, but I haven't received any help from you since you're still going to work. I know, sweetheart. I'm sorry. I'll try to get home as early as I possibly can next week. I think I'll be able to come home the day after tomorrow. I should be home by that evening. If you wanted to go shopping for food, clothes, or supplies then, shall we do that together? Well, I guess that's the only way we're going to be able to do these things together. I can't carry a lot of things by myself. My stomach's too large and it takes me forever to get around places by myself. It's okay, Sally. You don't need to worry too much about that. We'll get things sorted together as a team. I'll carry all our stuff for you. Aw, thank you so much, Isaac. That would really help me out a lot. Well, if your mom isn't too busy, I could ask her to help me out. Huh? Really? Why would you want to get my mom's help, though? Did she say something to you? Well, Martha said that if I was in any sort of trouble and couldn't do things on my own, that she'd help me out. I 
do wonder if I should get some help from her since I haven't really asked her to do anything yet. It's my first time giving birth to a baby and I'm feeling really anxious about it and I need advice from a woman who's gone through it before. You're also really busy at work, so you can't help me out as much. She also doesn't live too far away from us either, so it wouldn't bother her. Okay, I'm going to pause the conversation right there. Please don't try and ask her for help, Sally. Just don't even go there with her. Huh? What do you mean by that? What are you talking about? Why shouldn't I ask her for help? I'm just telling you now to stop talking to my mom. I really don't think you need her help. Don't you think it'll make her really tired if you keep asking her for help? I didn't mean to make it sound that way if I did. I just don't know how much I can do on my own without you here to help. Also, she offered her services to me, so shouldn't I take her up on the offer? She's going to be this child's grandmother after all. Okay, please don't take her offer of helping you. There's actually something that I didn't tell you about my mother, Sally. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? What didn't you tell me? You're starting to freak me out a little now. Please don't freak out. I just want you to know what's going on with my mom. She's actually quite ill, Sally. Wait, what? Why didn't you tell me she was sick? Is, is, is it something that could be life-threatening? No, not at all. She's not in a critical condition or anything. She's just a bit sick, that's all. She's outgoing treatment for it right now. I can't tell you all of the details because it's not my place for me to talk about it. I just wanted to say that she's sick. Well, I really had no idea that she was. You could have told me, Isaac. You didn't have to hide it from me. You're almost about to give birth, Sally. I don't want my mother worrying about you as she needs to focus on herself and get better. So try to avoid talking to her unless she starts talking to you first, okay? I'm sorry for being so secretive, but I strongly refrain from messaging her for help. Okay, I understand. I won't say anything to her about needing her help. I'll, I'll just let her get better. Is she going to be okay, do you think? Yeah, I think she's going to be okay since she's in the middle of her recovery. All I want is for you to spend as much time relaxing as you possibly can before the baby arrives. I don't want you getting any trouble with my mom. So please just refrain from contacting her for now. Really? Don't you think we're forgetting her if we don't contact her? Not even just one phone call or send her a message? Yeah, just don't talk to her. I don't think you do that on purpose or anything. I just wanted to tell you not to do it. Maybe you can talk to her in person once you've given birth to our baby. There'll be not as much stress on everyone once the baby's here. It's better for you to stay away from my mother, at least until she feels a bit better. She needs to focus on her health, and you should too. Now that you say that, I guess it'll be less stressful for everyone involved to just get better first. I understand. I really do hope that Martha gets better soon so that she can meet her new grandchild. I'm sure she's looking forward to that. Hey Sally, starting tomorrow, I've got to go on another business trip again. I'm really sorry, but I'm looking forward to getting a promotion. It should happen soon. Okay, you need to cool it. This seriously can't be happening right now. My due date's already here. It's next week. It would have been better if someone had taken your position on this business trip so that you could stay with me. Why are you always the one who's chosen to go on all these business trips? It happens almost every week. I'm getting really tired of this happening. I want you to be at home, or at least closer to home. Look, I'm really sorry about this, babe. <laughs> But I can't really help it if they choose me every time. It's my job to do this. But the busy season should come down soon, and I won't have to go on so many trips. Can you please just sit tight on this for just a little bit longer? Ugh, but this is so ridiculous, Isaac. How else am I supposed to react to this? I'm not sure if what they're doing is okay. Look, this baby's scheduled to come next week whether we like it or not. That's just how it's going to be. You'll definitely not be allowed to go on a business trip next weekend. You need to be here for when this baby arrives, Isaac. Okay, gotcha. I'll definitely be there. Don't you worry about that. I promise I'll be there to watch our baby be born. Okay, good. You better be since you're the father and you asked for leave to help me to take care of the baby. Take care on your business trip and hurry back here when you can. Hey, Sally, you've been a bit quiet lately. I've heard nothing but silence until now. I don't understand. To be honest, I've reached the limit of my patience. If I tell Isaac how I'm feeling, he won't listen to me, so I'll tell you. 
I don't know if what you're experiencing is postpartum hysteria or something along those lines, but how could you be so irresponsible? How could you be like this during a really stressful time for people? Huh? Is that you, Martha? Uh, hi there. Uh, I'm a little confused about what you're referring to. It's been a while since we last spoke to each other. Uh, how are you feeling? What are you talking about? It hasn't even been that long since I last spoke to you. Don't even think about showing your face around here, even if you want my help. How dare you force this task on me without letting me know or talking it out with me first? This is the worst thing you've ever done to me. Wait, just hold on a minute there, Martha. What are you even talking about? Why the heck are you so angry? What have I done exactly? What are you even saying? Don't you have any idea of what you've done? How could you be so ignorant? Where are you and Isaac right now? Just think about it for a little bit and maybe it might come back to you. I thought you were a good and decent person, but I guess I got you all wrong. How could you do this? You've become such a different person since you've given birth. I don't understand why. Huh? Since I've given birth, I haven't got a clue what you're talking about, Martha. Also, Isaac's on a business trip right now. Don't you dare lie to me. I can tell that's all a lie. I've already asked Isaac about what's going on with your situation. How dare you go on a vacation with only just giving birth to your newborn baby? How irresponsible of you! Oh my god. Now, just wait a minute, Martha, please. I, I can obviously see that you're very angry right now, but I've got no idea what you're talking about. What baby are you talking about? What are you trying to say, Martha? I told you that you can always count on me to help you out when the baby arrives, but isn't doing this a little too much? It's such an extreme thing to do. I completely misjudged your character. I thought that you were a more sensible person than this. What is that supposed to mean, Martha? Please explain what I've done to you. I really don't understand what's going on. How could you both go on a vacation as a couple and just leave your newborn baby behind with me? How am I supposed to take care of such a small being without you here? How could you be such a horrible wife? You obviously have got no idea how to be a parent. You're so horrible. Martha, I don't know where you got this idea from. It's kind of crazy. You do know that my baby is still in my tummy, right? Wait, what? You're still pregnant? Are you serious? Then who's this child that I'm talking about? Martha, what's going on over there? Are you taking care of a baby right now? Yes, I am. Isn't it your baby I've got in my arms right now? Am I wrong? What's going on here? Like I said before, Martha, I haven't given birth to my baby yet. It's still in my tummy. It's due any day now, but it's not been born yet. How is there a baby in your care right now, Martha? Is there actually a baby at your house right now? I am so confused right now. Are you seriously still pregnant? That baby's still inside you? What is happening here? I've got no idea what's going on, but this is a terrible joke. Whose baby is this? Why do I have it? I've really got no idea either, Martha, but we really need to sort this out so we're all on the same page. Isaac didn't tell you that I've already given birth to his child, has he? Oh my god, I'm so confused. I don't even know what to answer, but yes, Isaac said that you've already given birth to your baby. So he's just left a child with you and said that I've given birth and just left? What the heck's going on here? I suppose he did, yes. She's a very cute baby and he told me to call her Lila. At first I was happy that he left her with me, but he's left her with me every weekend. He said that he was going on a spa trip this week. He wanted to treat you since you did all the hard work in pushing out your baby. I thought it was odd that he was doing this so often and that leaving your baby with me was more or less abandoning your child. I couldn't believe it. I'm really angry about all of this. You can't just make me take care of a child like this. You also never came here and faced me when he dropped off the baby. Well, I'm here to tell you I'd never do that to you, Martha. I haven't given birth to our baby yet, so of course it's not me doing this. I was told by Isaac that you were really sick and to not visit you as it would stress you out a lot. So I was refraining from contacting you. Wait, what? Isaac said I was ill? Me? When did he tell you that I was sick? I'm healthy as a horse, Sally. I don't understand. Well, now I know what's going on. It, it seems like Isaac has been lying to the both of us for some reason. I guess you were never sick. Isaac lied? But why would he do that to us? There's got to be a reason why he's lying, right? 
Well, he lied to you about me giving birth to our child. I never said that I had given birth. I would have called you if I went into labor. I've also not received any messages from family or friends congratulating me on my birth, so I'm obviously still pregnant, right? My due date's next week, but my water could break at any time. You've got to believe me, Martha, I am still pregnant. Now that I think about it, I was thinking of sending a message saying congratulations on a healthy baby and if you needed anything, but he stopped me from doing that. Are you serious? He stopped you from calling or texting me? You've got to be kidding, right? He told me not to because he said you were on edge and just irritated by what was going on after the birth. He told me not to send you any messages because I might frustrate you even more, so I didn't, but then things were getting weird. I can't believe that your baby hasn't been born yet. I'm just wondering whose child I've been caring for. I really don't understand what's going on, Sally. Martha, I'll be sure to call you when I'm about to give birth. I wouldn't leave you out of this wonderful moment. I also would have sent you a lot of photos of the baby so that you can save them and put them in a photo album or something. Yes, that's very true. I know you would have done that. You're the type of person to keep people in the loop about important things. And if it was me leaving my child to go and do something, I would have left them with someone else since I wasn't sure if you were still sick or not. And I wouldn't do that to you without letting you know my plans first. That's also very true. I see what you're saying. You wouldn't do that to your old mother-in-law. But whose baby am I looking after? That's what I'm worried about right now. Well, that child isn't mine. I need to check with Isaac so we can find out whose child this is. This is super shady. Of course, we need to talk to him. We need to check with him right away about why he has this baby here. That's something that needs to happen. Oh, hold on a minute, Martha. I I've got an idea about how we can go about this. Oh yeah, you've got an idea? What do you plan on doing exactly? I feel like this isn't going to end well. He's done something he shouldn't have. If we continue asking a bunch of questions to Isaac, he's probably going to lie again. So listen very carefully. This is the plan. We've got no idea who this baby belongs to. I need to know what the baby actually looks like, Martha. Oh, yes, of course. I wouldn't lie to you about this. I just want things sorted and the truth to come out. Okay, then if you want the truth, please take a photo of the baby and send it to me. That way I can see what the baby looks like. I've actually already taken a bunch of photos on my phone. I think I took at least a hundred photos in one day. I really did think that it was you and Isaac's baby. Well, thank you for doing that. It'll really help me figure out what's going on and why he's making you take care of this baby. Keep the photos on your phone as well so that we've got some evidence that you've been taking care of it. I'll come over and visit so we can get this sorted out. Is that really a good idea, Sally? Will you be okay getting here in the condition you're in? You must be about ready to go into labor soon, right? I've still got a little bit of time before this baby arrives. I should be okay. I'm going to head over to your place right now, so just keep an eye out for when I arrive. Hi, my sweet, lovely lady. How are you feeling right now? Is everything okay? I'm going to come home today. I'm really sorry that I had to leave you at home by yourself again because of my business trip. Oh, that's okay, Isaac. Everything's fine with me. The baby's still hanging in there. I'm just sitting here having some fun. Oh, really? Did I miss something here? Did something interesting happen or something? Yeah, actually, something very interesting just happened, Isaac. There's something that I wanted to double check with you, though. Oh, okay. What do you want to check with me? What's going on exactly? So, Isaac... Last month, you went on two business trips. Am I correct in saying that? Yes, I went on a total of two business trips last month. That's how many my boss wanted me to take. Okay, what I don't understand is that this month, they increased in frequency. Every single weekend of this month, you went on a business trip. Yeah, I really couldn't help that. Our company just got a huge influx of business, and I just had to go on these trips so that the deals could be made. I told them that my wife was due to give birth any day now, but they just wouldn't listen. It's really hard to convey what I want to say to them. Well, to be honest, you were acting a little off even though I'm almost at full term. I thought you'd be getting excited for this baby to come. Huh? What are you talking about, sweetie? I'm not really sure what you mean. I don't know how you're not understanding what I'm saying. You get home late almost every single day and we hardly see each other. You know all those business trips you mentioned? You never really went on them, did you, Isaac? 
What do you mean I didn't go on any business trips? Sally, you're not making any sense right now. Can you explain more about what you mean? I wanted to know if you were telling the truth about those business trips, so I checked out your payslip. There was no travel allowance included with your paycheck. I didn't understand because the allowance was on there the last time you took a trip out of town for work. Did you even go on any business trips last month? You know you can be honest with me, right? Sally, you know you have to ask to see my payslips. You can't just look at them without telling me. Well, this is kind of embarrassing. <laughs> but I thought it was okay to look at them since we're husband and wife, right? I also looked at the statement again to confirm the movement of money into my bank account. Huh? Why would you look for that? Don't you trust me? What movement of money are you talking about? You haven't transferred any money to our savings account in the past few months. Since I went on maternity leave, I haven't truly been able to relax about our finances. I thought that you transferred the money in our account every month. I don't see it at all. Actually, now that I look at it more closely, you haven't deposited any money since I got pregnant. What on earth is going on, Isaac? Are you using the money for something else? Are you going to tell me where it's gone to? My salary barely covers our living expenses and other such things. It's getting more difficult to save any money for us. I'm sorry. I should have said something to you about it. I just haven't had the chance with working so much lately. Oh, is that so? Well, I wanted to know where you went on your business trip. Are you really on a business trip right now, Isaac? Sally, what's with all the questions? Has something happened? You're not really acting like your normal self. Are you doubting my whereabouts? Is that what all of this is about? How am I not being myself right now? You're making no sense. Are you telling me that I typically smile and are fooled by your antics and don't suspect anything? No, I didn't say anything like that. Even though I'm trying to earn a lot of money for us and do a good job at work, you're suspecting me of something completely different. To be honest, what you're saying is super unpleasant and I don't like it. So I would like you to stop, please. Excuse me, what did you just say? You're telling me that I'm being unpleasant? You're kidding me, right? Look, I'll come home this evening. Hopefully everything on your mind will calm down. Just please get dinner sorted by the time I get home. I'm really exhausted, so please just stop saying this nonsense, okay? Everything's fine, so just drop it. If I'm asking about something that's bothering me, I think it's necessary to get answers, but I understand. <laughs> I'll stop it. Fine, I'll wait for you to come home. I guess I'll see you later then. I really can't believe my own son would do something like this to you. Sally, I'm really sorry for what he's done. You've still carried that baby in you, and he just goes and does this terrible thing to you. He's such a scumbag. It's not you that needs to apologize, Martha. It's okay, but well, it's not okay. I don't know if it was good to find this out before I gave birth or not. I can't believe he was living a double life. He had a child with another woman and I had no idea. How could I be so stupid? If I had asked about all of this after I gave birth to my child, he might have gone absolutely crazy and accused me of not trusting him. What's more, they left their own child with me and went on a trip together, just the two of them. How could he do this? He completely lied to me that he was on these business trips for his work. I can't believe I fell for it. I can't believe my own son turned around and betrayed you. I didn't bring him up to do something like this. He's got no respect for people's feelings. I ended up pretending not to know what he did and he came back without knowing what I was going to say to him. I just wanted to make sure that it was true what he did to me before his family found out. I was glad that I was able to make him blurt out everything before he was able to escape the house. I could have just left on my own and just left him alone. Oh, Sally, I want to apologize from the bottom of my heart for my son's despicable behavior. I don't know how to make this up to you. I'll leave it up to you next to decide what to do. No matter what decision you make, I'll be by your side and support you in any way I can, Sally. Again, I am really, really sorry about this. Thank you so much for that, Martha. I appreciate it. I think we'll get a divorce and I will ask for alimony and child support. I need to think about what's best for my child from now on. Honestly, I don't want to meet that other child of his, and I don't want him to have anything to do with mine. 
I understand. I'll make sure that he pays you the alimony as well. My husband has decided to cut ties with Isaac because of this. My husband and I really want to support you in this since it's all Isaac's fault. He's been so horrible to you. I'm really sorry that things have turned out this way, Martha. Even though we're getting a divorce, I still want you to come over and visit the baby. Really? Are you sure, Sally? I wouldn't blame you if you didn't want us around. Martha, there's nothing wrong with you meeting your grandchild. You're free to do that. Thank you for everything you've done for me so far. Now, I'll ask Isaac for my money and please tell him to get ready for a fight. I'm not going to forgive him for this. In the end, Isaac got caught and admitted what he did. In turn, he lost everything. His parents were both furious and they disowned him on the spot. Apparently, Sally presented him with the divorce papers not long after. All of his relatives were on her side. No one took Isaac's side and he was left to stand alone in his corner. It's only natural to be alone, especially after finding out about a double life. Apparently, Isaac didn't know that his side piece was having an affair and also married. He was shocked when he was asked to pay alimony after what he did. He was told that he had to calm down after he found out how much he owed. It wouldn't be surprising to see what kind of life awaits such a scumbag who cheats on his pregnant wife. Amy, how are you? What are you doing right now? Hurry up and answer my messages. I know you're not busy. I bet you're just lying around doing nothing. Helen, hi. I'm fine. Hope you're well too. I'm sorry that I couldn't get to the phone quicker. I was driving. I need to prepare dinner when I get home, so I'm just out and doing groceries shopping. What about your son? Is he with you? Your parents were kind enough to offer to watch him. They're at home right now. Will loves his grandparents, so it's good for them to have some quality time together. Oh, I knew it. Don't give me that excuse. You don't think it's quality time for them. You're just being lazy. I don't understand what you're trying to say. You're making my mom take care of your son, aren't you? Because you can't be bothered to take care of him yourself, right? I bet you just moved in with my parents because you knew they'd offer to watch him and wanted to take advantage of their kindness. That wasn't the reason why we decided to move into your parents' house, but it's true that they've been really supportive. It's thanks to them that I can go on my part-time job without worrying about Will. I'm really grateful for their help. Good for you. You've only got one kid, but you've got all the help you can get. You can leave him with your husband's parents and do whatever you like. Usually, people only ask grandparents for help when they really need it, considering their age but you think you can use them as much as you like because you're so important. How arrogant can you get? I don't know where you got that idea, but that's not true. I'm not doing whatever I like, and I'm only relying on them because your brother has to go on long-term business trips for work. David's the one who first suggested we move in with your parents because he's away so much. I'm doing as many of the chores as I can when I'm at home, and of course I wish I could be at home all the time so I don't have to ask them to watch Will. But I don't want to be completely reliant on them for money either, so I want to earn some money so that I can cover some of the bills myself. Oh, come on. You're not as good a liar as you think you are, Amy. I know that you don't actually think any of that. You just want a part-time job so that my parents will think that you're working hard. You just want to take advantage of them. I can't believe that you'd think I was just using them. I really am just doing what I think is right. I have three children, you know, and they want to see their grandparents too. But because you're living with my parents, I can't visit. Do you know how long it's been since they last all saw each other? My parents haven't even met my youngest. Do you understand? It's all your fault. You're getting in the way of my children's quality time with my parents. You're splitting up a family because you can't be bothered to take care of one kid. I think it's amazing that you're able to take care of three children. I don't know how you do it without the help. You could come visit whenever you like, but the reason why you can't come and stay is because your second son is allergic to your parents' dog, isn't he? 
That's not the problem. Were you even listening to me? Why do you always have to interrupt me with the most irrelevant comments? Anyway, back to the conversation. I'm going to move in with my parents. I want you out right now. Excuse me? I'm sorry, this is all so sudden. I can't keep up. What are you talking about? Why do I have to move out? What's so hard to understand? I'm telling you to leave. Is it so bad for me to want to live with my own parents? I'm not saying it's bad. I just don't understand. You're saying that you want to move in with your parents and live with them in the same house? Of course, that's what I mean. What else could move in mean? Are you an idiot? Why do I have to explain such a simple sentence? I'm moving in. Capiche? I'm sorry, I was just surprised. Do you mean that you'll be moving in with your family? Your kids too? What will you do about Ricky's dog allergy? That's right. Do you really think I'd leave my children behind? You don't have to worry about that. I'll get my parents to give the dog away. It's as simple as that. My children are more important. But your parents love their dog. I think they'd be really sad to part ways. Does your husband agree with all of this? Won't it be tougher for him to get to work if he lives farther away from his office? My husband will be fine. It's none of your business, but he won't be living with us. He'll be living by himself. Okay. Do you mean that he'll be going away on business like David? Like I said, it got nothing to do with you. You really are so nosy. Why can't you just shut up and accept what I've decided? You're right. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have asked. My curiosity got the better of me. But if you're going to move in, then have you already spoken to your parents? I haven't heard anything from them about any of this, so I was wondering if it might have slipped their minds to mention it. Or maybe you hadn't spoken to them about it yet. I'll tell them when I feel like it. It's not like they need a warning or anything. They're my parents, not yours. They'll be delighted to hear that I'm coming home. And I'm the eldest daughter. It's my job to take care of my parents. They'll feel much more at ease with me taking care of them rather than a complete stranger. That way they can see their favorite grandchildren too. So I'm asking you to leave. You're just in the way. I'm sorry, what? You haven't told them anything? I don't have to. All I have to do is make sure you and your stuff are out of my parents' house so that I can move in. We can't all live in there together. It'll be too cramped. I'm their daughter and have three children, so I take precedence. You may have married my brother, but that doesn't make you more important than me. I move in and you and your son move out. Simple as that. Even if you say that, it's not something that can be done straight away or even in a few days. If that's what you were planning, then you should have mentioned something or given me a warning or at least asked for your family's opinion. Have you spoken to David? Of course I haven't. Don't you know where your own husband is? He's on the other side of the world. How am I supposed to get in touch with him without losing sleep? Do you really want me to bother him with something so trivial while he's working? And you call yourself his wife. Why can't you just accept what I've told you to do? You can tell David when he gets home from his business trip. I understand that you don't want to bother him, but if you haven't spoken to David or your own parents, how did you decide all of this? You can't just decide by yourself. That's way too self-centered. Of course I decided by myself. My mom and dad have no reason to say no to me. They love me the most. I may be an adult, but I still have them wrapped around my little finger. If they hear that they'll get to live with me and their grandchildren, they'll be overjoyed. That's why I should be the one living with them, not you. Do you understand, or was that too difficult for you as well? That might be true, but you can't honestly think that you can just decide that behind all of our backs. You may not realize it, but you're causing a lot of trouble for my mom by making her take care of your son. He's only turned one recently, right? Do you know how hard it is for someone my mom's age to watch a kid that young? I can't just stand by and watch as you take advantage of my mom. 
You're right, I've caused her a lot of trouble, and I'm really grateful for all the time she's dealt with Will's tantrums and hyperactiveness while I've been at work. But you can't decide this without her opinion. Besides, your youngest is still only six months old, isn't she? I think that would be more of a burden. Oh, shut up. You think you're better than me, but you're not. Unlike someone, I actually stay at home and take care of my own kids, rather than go out to work and waste my time. I won't ask my mom to babysit. I take pride in taking care of my kids myself. Neither one of us is better than the other. I respect you for being a stay-at-home mom with three kids. I happen to go out to work a part-time job, but why does that mean that I'm wasting my time? We're each doing what we think we should do in our own situations. Isn't that enough? Either way, I can't up and leave so easily. Why not? Because where am I supposed to go? How am I supposed to move all of mine and David's stuff without any help from David? Maybe I could move out after David comes back, but I can't find a place at such short notice, and I can't accept a decision you made without consulting any of us. You can leave David's things. He's family, after all. We'll store his things carefully until he comes back. You just have to take your stuff, your son, and get out. You're being unreasonable. Why do I have to move out right now? Because I can't forgive people like you who try and take advantage of my parents' kindness just because they offered a babysit doesn't mean you can use them like they're a daycare service. I never liked you, even before you married David. But I thought I should respect his choice of partner. Now I know that I should have made more of an argument against you when I had the chance. That laid-back attitude of yours really pisses me off. I'm sorry, our conversation wasn't going anywhere, so I asked if anyone knew why you'd suddenly start acting like this, and your husband told me what's been going on. I heard that you're going to get divorced. That's why you're so desperate to kick me out, isn't it? What? What are you talking about? Why would you talk to my husband behind my back? When I asked your mom, she told me that she hadn't heard anything about you planning to move in and confirmed that she hadn't agreed to anything like that. She didn't understand why you were being so aggressive towards me. She hadn't seen you in person for a while and was worried about you, so she called your husband to ask about you. He told her about the divorce and a lot of other things. My mom did? Seriously? Uh, she called my husband? What else did she hear? She found out that your husband went to stay with his parents until the divorce is over. He told us that he had asked you to move out as soon as possible because he can't keep on going to work from his parents' house and because he doesn't want to see you anymore. That's why you suddenly decided that you wanted to move in with your parents, but didn't tell them anything because you wanted to avoid telling them why you're getting a divorce. Yeah, so what? It's private. It's none of your business. I don't have to explain myself to you. All you have to do is hurry up and leave so that I can move in. You want to move in because you have nowhere else to go. All that talk about not trusting me and not being able to forgive me for using your parents was all just an excuse to cover up your own mistakes. You don't even know what condition your parents are in. What? What are you talking about? What do you mean my parents' condition? They're fine. Your dad isn't as fine as you think. I'm the one that's currently taking care of him. Huh? Taking care of him? Why are you acting like that's such a special thing? Of course you should be taking care of him. Don't be lazy. It's a lot more serious than that. I mean that ever since he collapsed last year, he's needed more support doing day-to-day -day tasks. It seems like you were just satisfied that he was still alive, so you never came to see how he was doing. You don't know it, but he's been really frail. It's the main reason why David and I decided that we should move in with your parents, because it would be too difficult for your mom to take care of him by herself, and it would be easier on us if we were in the same house rather than going to visit several times a week. Uh, I didn't know that he needed care. What? Does he need help going to the toilet? Why didn't you tell me that sooner? I would have told you, but you never asked. You didn't seem to care about your parents' needs since you always only contacted them when you needed something. And whenever your mom calls, you always let it go to voicemail. You may not know this, but she always is so disappointed that she can never even hear your voice. Sometimes I just can't get to the phone. What's so bad about that? Give me a break. Like when? Like when you're having an affair, for example? I can imagine that it would be really awkward for you to answer the phone when you're busy with a guy that isn't your husband. What? 
I'm not having an affair. Did my husband say that I was having an affair? Because he's lying. You cheated and got pregnant. And when Haley was born, your youngest daughter's dad is the man you're having an affair with. Of course not. But that's the reason why you're getting divorced, right? He already told us that he filed for a fault divorce because he didn't want to have to suffer the whole separation period. Which means that your husband already has evidence, like a DNA test. There's no point trying to pretend you didn't do anything wrong. Your mom didn't know, of course, and was apologizing to your husband. She didn't think that you were selfish enough to break up your own family, but that's exactly what you've done. Your husband was surprised that your parents didn't know anything, too. Ugh, you're so annoying. But, just like you said, there's no point pretending it never happened if you know the truth. Will you lend me some money? What? Where did that come from? You got a part-time job, right? So you must have some money to spare. I need to borrow some. I can't pay off the damages to my husband by myself. Ugh, he demanded a lot. Even though he knows I haven't been working since we married. Oh, and I'm planning to move into my parents' house at the end of the month. So I'll give you until then to get rid of your stuff. I'd be grateful if you prepared some money for me to borrow then too. What are you talking about? Do you really think I'll do anything for you now I know why you're asking for all of this? Plus, your mom is saying that she won't let you kick us out, especially since I'm clearly more willing to be your dad's caregiver. Maybe you should just find a job and rent your own apartment instead of assuming that everyone around you will clean up after you. But I don't want to. Do you expect me to get a job in a supermarket or something? Oh, that's so embarrassing. And it'll be hard to find an apartment that's suitable for kids. Your husband was saying that he would take custody of the children. He's already taken the older two with him to his parents, hasn't he? You might as well just let him take Haley, too, since he's offering. He has the means to raise them. You don't. You need to do something about that first. If I give up all my children, I won't be able to demand that he pay child support. I can't do anything without that. He makes a lot of money, so I can demand as much as I want. Are you being serious? Is that the only reason why you want to take your kids back? Because you won't be able to receive child support without them? You want to use your children to get money. What kind of mother are you? Anyway, I've just spoken to David. He agrees with me that we shouldn't support you financially. You need to get a job and work for it yourself. If you really love your children, you'd understand that that's what's best for them too. Now that you're divorced. Besides, we don't have money to spare. We're saving so that we can get my license as a caregiver. That way I can get benefits for taking care of your dad and I won't have to go to work. I can support him full time. I imagine that's impossible for you, so give up on moving in with your parents. Then what am I supposed to do? I won't have anywhere to go. Why don't you ask your paramour? He has a family too. I can't ask him for money. Are you an idiot? Clearly you're the idiot, since you've been asking me for money and more this entire conversation. Anyway, we're not going to support you at all. You've just got to sort things out yourself. If you really want to live with your parents and really do want to kick us out, you should consider that if you do that, you'll have to take care of your dad 24-7. He needs a lot of care and you'll need a lot of resolve. Oh, I can't do that. Your mom was doing her best all by herself until we moved in. But it was becoming a strain on her and that's why I've taken over most of the responsibilities. It's easier on her to take care of a one-year-old that only weighs a few kilos rather than a grown man. So yeah, I don't think you can either. But you're the one that said the eldest daughter should take care of her own parents, remember? Then you should just call a professional to do that. Then can you provide the money for that service? No, I can't, but... Then stop being so irresponsible. Oh, fine. I won't try and kick you out. So just lend me some money. That's all I ask. I'll pay you back. I swear. You can trust me. I need to pay my husband or he'll take all of my children from me. You understand, don't you? You're a mother too. How would you feel if you were about to lose your children? I can't give them up. I don't understand at all. I don't understand the feelings of someone who prioritizes their affair over their own children. Your husband told us that you left your children unattended while you went out to meet with your lover. And you only want your children back because you want child support so you don't have to work. I don't want to understand how your brain works at all. If you won't take care of your dad or even try, 
and you don't have the money to pay for a professional, then you should try taking care of yourself first and get a job. Maybe if you show that you're willing to pay, your husband will let you pay installments instead. You'll learn more about being a decent human being if you learn that there are consequences to your actions. What do I do about my children? What about the child support? You're still going on about the child support? If that's all you can think of, then you've got a long way to go. And I suggest that if you care at all for your children, you'll let your husband take custody. They deserve that much at least. If someone as irresponsible as you raises them, I hate to imagine what kind of people they'll grow into. Anyways, do your best. Good luck with your job search. I hope you're happy. Helen finally gave up on trying to force Amy out of her parents' house, but she hadn't learned her lesson and called her mother to try and convince her to help her. Of course, her mother wasn't interested in hearing her excuses and only told her what Amy had been messaging her all this time. Helen was told that she couldn't depend on her parents to save her because she was a grown woman and needed to fix her own mess. Her mother even went so far as to tell her to never come home. It looks like Helen's own parents had gotten sick of her taking advantage of their love for her and warned her to never expect them to lend her money or run errands for her ever again. In the end, her two older children were taken by her husband, and she couldn't demand that he pay child support since her youngest daughter wasn't actually his. Her lover wouldn't acknowledge that Haley was his daughter either because he had a family, so nobody was obliged to pay child support. Haley was stuck with Helen as her mother, so Amy decided that she would sometimes visit them to see if Helen was actually working and doing her best to raise her daughter. Helen seems to have finally accepted her fate and is working day and night to pay her husband his settlement and to raise Haley. Alice, when are you going to come see us? I plan to come see you during the long weekend in May. Why do you ask? You're not going to come see us until May? Ugh, that is too far away. Can't you come over sooner? You're part of this family now. You should make time for your new family too. What do you mean by that? Look, I've told you many times before, but I don't think you understand what it means to marry into this family. We have certain rules and traditions that need to be followed. We have certain expectations of you. Uh, I see. You've told me this a million times, but I still don't seem to grasp the meaning of what you've been telling me. You married my brother, so I'd like you to come visit more often with him. It's quite simple, really. And don't you think you're being rude to my parents as well? They miss having my brother around. I don't think that I'm being rude to anyone. That kind of thinking is what makes you rude. Now that you're married, you should think more about your in-laws and their needs. Don't you want them to like you? The happiness of your husband's family should be one of your top priorities now. Didn't your parents teach you any manners? I feel sorry for you that you grew up to be so clueless. You're the one that doesn't have any manners. You shouldn't make negative assumptions about my parents. You don't even know them. I'm not being rude. I'm just stating the facts. The reason why I haven't been able to come visit you and your family often is because it's difficult for us to take time off work. We're both really busy. If we had the time, we'd come over. Your mother is very understanding about this, so I don't know why you're making such a big deal out of this. My mom is only being nice to you because she doesn't want to be rude. Deep down, she misses seeing my brother. You shouldn't take her kindness for granted. You haven't been able to produce any offspring yet. Don't you want my parents to meet their grandchildren? I can't believe you're trying to make me look like the bad person here. I'm not blaming anyone for this situation. Well, I feel like you're neglecting our family. And you also have a pretty big attitude. I would act more modest around my in-laws. Also, don't you feel bad that you haven't been able to bear any children? I'm sure that deep down my brother and mother feel oh so disappointed. I don't understand why my brother chose you as his wife. Now you're just being hurtful. Do you have to be so cruel to me? What have I ever done to you? The fact that Alan and I can't have any children is something that we need to work out together. It has nothing to do with you. Besides, I'm getting along just fine with your parents. You're the only one giving me a difficult time. You got that right. I'm having a hard time getting through to you. 
I don't understand what Alan sees in you. You're not the type of person I can be friends with. Wow, you're being honest today. It's because you just don't get it. You use work as an excuse not to spend any time with us. Alan tells me that you make him do half the housework too. You don't have any children, so why shouldn't you have the time to take care of the house on your own? You shouldn't be asking for my brother's help. I really don't understand you. I feel sorry for your parents too. They have a lousy daughter. What's it to you? Why do you care so much? I'm sick and tired of you complaining about everything. This is my marriage. Please stay out of it. You know that I'm right. You just don't want to admit it. How much time do you have on your hands? Why do you message me every day? Don't you have anything better to do? Why don't you get my brother to stop me if it bothers you so much? I'm sure that he's going to side with me though. He values me more than you. I do understand that you don't like me, but could you please stop being mean to my family as well? What do you have against us? I'm just saying you're a lousy wife and daughter. I heard that you got engaged. He met your parents, right? How do you know that? Your mother sent me a photo of you and him when he visited your house the other day. Why would she do that? You don't have to worry about me though, I'm going to be a great wife unlike you. Do you know where your fiancé Kevin is from? How do you know his name? It's very creepy of you. I don't want Kevin to meet you ever. You're an embarrassment to my family. I'd like you to divorce my brother. Please leave me and my family alone. We don't want anything to do with you. You haven't answered my question. Do you know where Kevin is from? He's from the town next to ours. I'm from the same town as Kevin, you know. Huh? What's that got to do with anything? Kevin is my childhood friend. What's your point? I just think it's a big coincidence. Kevin and I used to be neighbors. We've known each other since we were small, and we went to the same school together until we graduated high school. I still see him a couple of times a year when we meet up with old friends. Where are you going with this? When I saw the photo that your mother sent me, I was shocked to find out that he's now engaged to you. So you've known Kevin since he was a child? This isn't your idea of a sick joke then? This isn't a joke. Your fiancé is one of my best friends. Isn't that so weird? Yes, it's very weird. In fact, it's kind of creepy. But I'm engaged to Kevin and there's nothing that you can do about that. Why would I do anything? Don't you want to try and say mean things about me to Kevin? I don't. I'm sure you'd get a kick out of telling him what a bitch I am to you. Look, I'm actually a decent person. You're the one bullying me. At least you seem to be aware of the fact that you're a bully to me. Shut up. And don't say anything about me to Kevin. I finally got him to propose to me. I won't let you ruin this for me. I see. I know that you've had a hard time finding someone to ask you out. You're lucky that you met Kevin. Stop patronizing me. You're 30 and in love with your brother. You're not exactly a catch. It's a miracle that you got Kevin to propose to you. You're being rude again. I'm sure that I'm nowhere near as rude as you. You know that, don't you? Or are you one of those people that hurt people and don't even realize it? If that's the case, Kevin is not going to be happy in his marriage. Look, I get it now. If I apologize, will you not say anything to Kevin? I think it's a little too late for that. My family and Kevin's family are really close. Kevin would be devastated if he found out what you said about me and my parents. I had no idea you and Kevin were so close. I'm really sorry for my behavior up until now. I promise to be a better sister-in-law to you from now on. Will you forgive me? That doesn't sound like a heartfelt apology to me. I'm not out to destroy your relationship with Kevin. I'm not evil. And you won't say anything to Kevin then? I don't plan to. You're nicer than I expected. 
Like you said, we're family now. Family is supposed to look out for one another, right? And I'd like Kevin to have a happy marriage. He means so much to me. I think we started off on the wrong foot. You're actually a good person. I'm sorry I didn't realize that sooner. So, you're going to move in with Kevin's parents, right? Well, we haven't talked about that yet. Why not? Kevin told me that he expected you to move in with his parents. I like living in this town. I don't want to move. There isn't much to do in Kevin's town, and I prefer living with my own parents. And I wouldn't have so much freedom if I had to live with Kevin's parents. That makes no sense. You're the one that told me that once a woman gets married, she should move in with her in-laws. It's a little different for me, you see? I already live with my own parents, so it doesn't make sense for me to move out. Kevin is going to move in with us. He told me that he's fine with that. Does he know that you mean your parents' place and not his? What do you mean? If you only said live with your parents, he may have misunderstood you and thought that you were talking about his parents and not yours. But if I'm the one using the word parents, normally that would mean my parents and not his, right? Okay, if you say so, I was just a little worried because I know that Kevin divorced his ex-wife because she refused to move in with his parents. I figured that he would expect the same from you, that's all. What? I suppose he loves you more than his ex-wife. Lucky for you. If Kevin's okay with it, there's no issue here. Wait a minute. I wish you and Kevin all the happiness in the world. You're not making any sense. I had no idea that Kevin was married before. You didn't know. Why would he hide that from you? In fact, Kevin's been married twice before, and he has three children from his previous marriages. I assumed he told you that. Well, he didn't. You're making this all up. You're just trying to get back at me. I'm merely stating the facts here. I'm surprised that Kevin kept this from you. By the way, I let Kevin's mother know what kind of person you really are. What did you say to her? I told her that you knew how important it was for you as Kevin's wife to move in with them after you two are married. Kevin's mother really appreciated the fact that you were willing to move in with them. She was thrilled. Kevin's first wife moved in with them, but she had enough after six months of living together. And Kevin's second wife was resistant to moving in from the beginning. She's so happy that Kevin met you. This is the first time I'm hearing of this. Kevin didn't say a word to me. I am not going to move in with Kevin's parents. I guess you should say that to Kevin and his parents because they seem to think otherwise. But if you tell them how you really feel, Kevin may rethink his marriage to you. Is that really what you want? I mean, you are so desperate to get married. I can't see you meeting another man anytime soon. I am not going to live with Kevin's parents, but I can persuade him to still marry me. I'm sure that he'll understand where I'm coming from. Are you sure about that? Kevin's really old-fashioned in his way of thinking. And he loves his mother too much. He probably loves her more than he loves you. The two are inseparable, so I think that you'll have a hard time persuading them. Really? I didn't know that Kevin was so close to his mother. What am I supposed to do then? Also, I had a chat with Alan. I showed him all the messages that you sent me up until now. Why would you do that? I was angry, and I wanted him to know what you were doing to me. We both don't intend on coming over to your parents' house as long as you live there. And you won't be hearing from either of us again. Why is Alan upset with me too? He's upset because you don't know how to be nice to me. He used to love you, but after he saw how you were treating me, he was pretty upset. If you decide to move in with Kevin's parents, we can go see your parents whenever we want to. Don't you think that moving in with Kevin's parents is the best thing for everyone in this family? Please ask Alan to forgive me. My mother will be upset if she finds out that Alan's angry with me. This is your mess. You need to figure out a way to fix this yourself. Say hi to your new mother-in-law for me. Please don't message me ever again. Bye! <laughs> 
Karen explained to Kevin that she wanted to continue to live with her parents and she asked him to move in with her. Kevin didn't want that because he didn't want to be separated from his own parents. Kevin told Karen that he would call off their engagement if she didn't agree to live with his parents, and if their engagement were to be called off, he would be asking her to pay him alimony. In the end, Karen ended up marrying Kevin and putting his needs before her own. But things didn't go so well for Karen. She found it tough and miserable to be living with her in-laws. On top of that, she saw that Kevin had to use a majority of his earnings to pay for child support for the children that he already had with his previous two wives. That didn't leave much money for Kevin and Karen, and so they were forced to live a frugal life. Also, Kevin cared a great deal for his mother and didn't pay much attention to Karen, which left her feeling very lonely. I guess karma gave Karen what she deserved in the end. Miss Jennifer! <laughs> <laughs> I looked on your social media yesterday. That dress is seriously the worst thing imaginable. <laughs> you saw? Uh, yeah, of course I saw. I saw your dress, but even worse was the bride's dress. <laughs> uh, I kind of expect it from your sister, though. I mean, it's not like I wanted to see it, but it showed up in my feed, so what can you do, right? All the attendees had their faces hidden, but it was from that boring old woman's marriage, so I'm sure it was full of boring old attendees. Please don't be like that. It's my sister you're talking about. Besides, we all went to the same local piano class. We're all friends here, right? We're all on speaking terms. Back in the day. She was a boring, unimpressionable pipsqueak. She was younger than me, but for some reason the teacher's favorite. She tried to be more noticeable than me at the rehearsal. I never liked her from back then. I didn't realize that my younger brother's fiance was that girl's sister. Literally the worst. <laughs> I don't know what you want me to say. It's a small town. It can't be helped. When I used to take piano classes a while back, I really didn't like her at all. That's why I would always do little things to piss her off. <laughs> you know, like tearing the back of her dress. Or putting thumbtacks on the bottom of her chair. Oh man, I remember when she sat down on them without looking. That was seriously hilarious! <laughs> You're the worst! Why would you do such a thing? Now that stupid little girl has grown up to marry someone, what does the world come to? What kind of weird man would want to marry that thing anyway? Please stop right now! I'm so glad I didn't take part in it. When you tried to talk me into going, honestly, I had to think about it for a second. Is that true? You know how at a wedding a lot of people get to know each other? So, I wanted to meet someone and settle down, or so I thought, but... <sighs> if it's your younger sister's man, there couldn't possibly be any good men. I didn't want to give her a gift either. So, I'm glad I didn't go. I see. We were still relatives, and it seemed like you two knew each other from a while back. That's why I invited you all, but you missed out on a really great wedding, you understand that? <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, it's your younger sister's wedding, so I'm sure everything looks great in your eyes. It's that woman's husband anyway. I'm sure he's terrible looking. She's nothing like me. I only want a good-looking man who clearly makes over 100k a year. Those are the only people who are worthy of going out with me. Is that why you can't find anyone to get married to yet? What is that attitude? It's not like I can't find anyone. It's just that I haven't yet. If I wanted to get married... <laughs> It wouldn't take me that long to get married. But no one is worthy of my time yet. 
so I'm still in the selection stage. I see. Here's a photo of my sister's husband. Huh? Oh, um, wow, really? Ooh, he actually doesn't look that bad. I expected much worse. Your sister must have really worked hard to find that man. <laughs> oh, or maybe she's being played. Hmm. With a face like that, I feel like he could just be scamming her. Your younger sister is so boring looking and straight edged for some reason. I feel like she could be tricked easily. Are you sure it's okay? She's not loaning him any money, is she? <laughs> I don't think that she would need to loan him any money. Oh, and how do you know? Because he's a doctor? Huh? Oh, sorry, did I not tell you? My sister's a nurse. You wouldn't believe how fancy the wedding was. You really can't underestimate how rich a doctor is. It was incredible. He's a doctor? It was a brilliant hotel, and there was apparently a really famous chef. The food was incredible, too. Really? Yeah, the attendees were all fancy. They were all basically just single men. Most of them worked at famous research hospitals, too. All of his co-workers, all of his old friends, they were all doctors. What the hell? Why didn't you just tell me that first? Why would I? If you had told me that first, of course I would have gone. A doctor is way too good for someone like your younger sister and is perfect for someone like me. Oh, I should have gone. And you knew that. But you didn't tell me because you knew that, right? You, you're seriously the worst. Get a divorce. You need to get a divorce with my younger brother right now. Don't worry, I'll let him know what you think. Huh? I think he'll be pretty pissed off, hearing that you were just telling me to get a divorce from him. So tell him then. Not that I care if he gets angry anyway. I think that if you don't have our support though, you're going to be in serious trouble. Are you sure you're going to be okay? You would never do such a thing. You think he's just going to abandon my parents? Well, we thought that we were helping your parents out, but it seems like you were just stealing the money anyway. We found out about that recently, so I think that telling him about what you said right now will make him stop sending you money. Even if he doesn't stop, I will be giving Mom the money directly from now on. Whatever. Anyway, introduce me. What? Introduce you to who? Introduce me to your younger sister's husband's friends. I don't care if they're co-workers or what. You didn't take me to the wedding, so that's the least you can do. I invited you, but you didn't come. That was your decision. I don't know their contact information anyway. I can't introduce you. What? You're seriously so damn useless. Just ask your younger sister then. You can literally figure it out. Think about it before you say you can't. Why do I have to do all that for you? I don't think my younger sister is going to be doing any of that for you either. Why the hell not? There aren't that many beautiful single women like me. I'm a keeper for sure. I don't think my younger sister is going to be introducing some rotten bitch to a bunch of her co-workers. <laughs> rotten bitch? What? Oh, I was talking about you, Yvonne. How rude of you! How could you be that rude to your husband's sister? I cannot believe the audacity. It's the truth. That includes everything from the past, too. Even as a grown adult, you made fun of my younger sister. You even made fun of her wedding photos. You had to nitpick. There was no way I would introduce anyone like that. By the way, that dress you were calling lame? It was apparently in the Paris collection. You really don't understand high-class fashion, do you? I didn't say anything bad about the dress. You literally talked bad about it. <laughs> I guess classy items are something beyond your realm of understanding, huh? 
I mean, to be fair, you do collect fake brand bags that kind of look like the real thing. <laughs> I just like the design of them, okay? It has nothing to do with you. That's true, but your love life also has nothing to do with me. So I'm not going to introduce you to anyone. I'm not going to tell my sister about it either. <laughs> Why not? You should have forced me to go even if I didn't want to go. I see. <laughs> You really didn't want me to get married, huh? What? You didn't want me to marry some high elite class man and stand above you and your stupid ass sister. I see. Now it all makes sense. Just admit it. I didn't think about that at all. I'm actually perfectly fine with my life right now. I don't think my sister gives a shit about you either. <laughs> also, I'm just going to be clear about it now. Just because you showed up to the wedding doesn't mean that people who are making six digits a year aren't going to choose some old hoe like you. What the hell are you talking about? Of course they're going to choose me. I'm the most beautiful woman in town. I'm so popular. I'm still in the beauty team for the town. You were released from the beauty team. You're just a drugstore clerk now. Besides, the whole thing about being the most beautiful woman in town that was when you were in elementary school. Are you seriously talking about something that was true 30 years ago? <laughs> oh, shut up. You just don't understand. My appeal is incredible and everyone loves me. Whatever. Just introduce me to your sister's husband. Huh? I'm sure you have his contact info, right? Tell me right now. I'm so much more woman compared to your younger sister, and I'm gonna let him understand that. Okay, now you're really not making any sense. <laughs> you can't find a good job and you're almost 40. You're literally stealing and mooching off your parents' retirement. What are you talking about? I am not almost 40. I'm only 37. Also, my sister has already left for her honeymoon. They're apparently traveling around Europe now. I'm not going to tell you any contact information, and from now on, we will be stopping all financial support for you. After you being that rude, we have no choice but to cut all ties. I don't want you to try to make any weird moves towards my sister's husband anyways. Now, hang on about the money. You don't have to be that rash, right? I'm sure some six-figure-a-year good-looking dude will find you, right? <laughs> Keep dreaming, dumbass. <laughs> Jennifer explained everything to her husband and was furious as expected. Her husband loves Jennifer very much, so when he saw the whole thing with the divorce and the story about being introduced, he just couldn't forgive her anymore. He got pissed off at her at the phone and then called his parents and said that he would not be contacting her ever again. He said that he would not be going home unless they chased her out of their house. And so her parents are trying to convince her to leave the house. Yvonne started spewing something about how she was going to find some rich man and be a gold digger. But no one wanted to go out with this almost 40-year-old live-at-home woman. She's all alone now. It's going to be a while before she finds someone to settle down with. 